Hey guys, this is Chad with Take One Film and Video here in Nashville, Tennessee, and today we're going to be talking about cinema cameras and broadcast cameras and the inevitable merger of the two, so let's get into it. Well, here at Take One, we deal with both sides. We deal with uh, the broadcast and uh, we deal with the cinema. So in our system integration side of our company, almost everything that we do and that we build is that broadcast uh, style. So what I mean by that, cameras with two third inch mounts and lenses, uh, cameras like you would see normally on like a, a, a sports game or a television broadcast truck or in a new studio. Um, those cameras are pretty much uh, very consistent when it comes to the way that they're set up, the way that they're operated. And most of the time, all of those cameras are static. They don't move. And you'll get operators that uh, their function really is just to zoom and focus and to be able to establish a shot from a static position in most cases. Now, the cinema side is totally different. And you typically don't find that freelancers or operators in the cinema world cross over to broadcast and vice versa. Not often do you see that. And the reason is, is because it's a completely different style of shooting. Uh, cinema cameras will obviously are going to have larger sensors. They're kind of going to be in that full frame or 35 millimeter uh, that we've been used to all the way back in the film days. And so uh, we're used to bigger lenses, um, a lot of primes, and most of the, the comp composition of the shot really is going to be uh, moving the camera physically, whether it's on a dolly or a steady cam, and not so much relying on the zoom. And so again, totally different style of shooting. The camera operators are obviously going to be operating the essential parts of the cameras, and you're typically going to have a focus puller who's going to be operating the focus and other people operating um, ACs and, and that are going to be operating different aspects of the camera. So you've got a lot more people involved into doing things that's a lot more scaled down in a broadcast. But what we're starting to see in the market is the bridging of those two worlds because now a lot of the broadcast um, productions, they want to get that cinema look. Because the thing that we love about cinema is that whole natural feel, the, 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 the reason that we use those prime lenses and the reason that we shoot with the shallow depths of field is so that we can create a look or a feel or just to basically replicate what our eyes see naturally anyway. And so we want to start bringing that more into the broadcast world that we typically are more used to, the flat or wider depths of field and it just has that, you know, I call it the video look. This is nothing really new. Actually back in 2013, Ikigami and Ari got together and collaborated on a project where basically Ari had an Alexa as the head on the front PL mount using cinema lenses and Ikigami built a control of the back of the camera that was essentially a broadcast camera control back. And that camera connected to a CCU and it ran into a studio where you'll have a video guy running a, a RCP or an ROP that looks just like this, um, where the video guy is gonna control your iris, he's gonna control the colors of the camera and set up. And his job is to make multiple cameras on set all match and look the same. Now, that camera was, Actually, it was a great looking camera. Um, it wasn't very popular with operators. It was very heavy, very awkward, and you know you didn't see much of it out there. But we were kind of back into figuring out how to bridge those because now more than ever, we want that cinema look. So how do we accomplish that? Well, I've got a setup here that um, I really like. There are a few cameras out there that are able to kind of cross that bridge. Um, and I'll say too, most cinema cameras, they're just not built or designed to ever be used in a, in a broadcast situation. They're used to be um, operated independently, configured like a film camera. And the Vericam is definitely a camera that was built to that style. So it was a Sony Venice. We can use those cameras in this example because they're gonna be about, about the same of what we're talking about. But the good thing is they're opening up features that allow you now to be able to build and configure a system that has that broadcast control but still uses the, the great things that we love about the cinema heads. So let's use the Vericam as an example since we have it here. Uh, the Vericam now uh, through software generations and so forth has been able to allow network control so that you can actually operate the Vericam through the ROP. And as you can see, basically I have a simple network connection from here to the camera and it talks to it and what I can do is I can actually control the iris with the Fujinon Cabrio that I have on there right now and I can do all the color imagery like I would a normal broadcast camera. We get to take care of our color imagery and our video side of the camera but the lens is important too and the reason that we have the Cabrios is this is one of a few lenses. Uh, Canon has an option too but this particular lens it's great because 
Now we have the option to operate like a broadcast operator would. If you look over here on the side of the lens, you'll see a servo mount with a rocker zoom. And this is typically what you would see on a handheld camera for a broadcast on a two third inch lens. But yet here we have it on the Cabrio. It's a PL mount that's made for, it's a 35 millimeter lens. And yet that servo box has controls that give you broadcast style zoom and focus operation. So when you have a freelance broadcast guy coming up operating your cinema camera, he's not going to uh, panic when he sees something he's not familiar with. These are gonna be very familiar controls. It'll operate the zoom, it'll operate the focus just like he would on a normal broadcast lens. And the great thing about the ROP controlling the camera is that it will also operate your iris. So you can have a video shader position that does his job like he would normally would. He can open and close the iris. Again, paint and control the cameras, set up the menus, however he wants to do it. So uh, you basically create a broadcast style operating scenario with a cinema camera. Now, if we want to take this a step further, the things that make broadcast cameras kind of uh, all in one uh, is that they have things like tallies, they have intercom, uh, they have return videos and things that the camera operator can use. Now, obviously we can't do that the way it's configured here with just a single network connection because all we're doing is controlling the lens and the camera. But there are third-party manufacturers like Multidyne that make adapters for cameras like the Vericam and the Venice that pop on the back of the battery mount and uh, they will be powered by a SMPTE cable. SMPTE cable is what powers normal broadcast cameras. So you plug in a SMPTE cable and then you get this breakout. It controls the, the, the camera. It'll give you intercom. It'll give you tallies. It'll give you returns for your camera operator. And that uh, has a connection to the studio end where it ties into the engineering side. So you get all of those features. Uh, so you essentially get a full feature broadcast camera. And again, all that ties into uh, the cinema camera. So there's a lot of different options there. It's still, a, you know, one thing personally that I don't like sometimes is when you have a lot of cables hanging out and things. So that's still a compromise that we have to deal with for a little while until a manufacturer comes out with a comprehensive camera that's a cinema on the front, broadcast on the back, kind of like what Ikigami and Ari did back in 2013. I think we're gonna get there. But in the meantime, this is a very, very usable solution. It's being used in applications all over the country. So the cinema world, the broadcast world, they're coming together, but there's still some complexities there. And that's why we want to help you figure out exactly what you want to accomplish. We can walk you through those steps. So give us a call at 1-877-81-TAKE-1 or email us at mail at take1.tv. Comment below if you have any other questions. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this and want to see more videos. And we look forward to seeing you soon.